So if we think about what banking is, it's actually very, very simple. So bankers are in the value business. We transfer about value, whether it's RANDs or Kruger RANDs, et cetera, or if it's bonds, equities. We store value for people, again, whether it's deposits. We provide value, whether it's through equity or through debt, a loan or an investment. And we protect value, whether it's through insurance or derivatives or things like that. Or we may advise on these four different pillars. But banking is no more and no less than this. It's quite simple. The blockchain has the ability to really disrupt two, of, two areas of banking in a big way. Payments or value transfer and storage or the deposits. Payments, globally as the, as a, as a, as the industry, as an industry of, of banks, there was about $1.7 trillion that was received in revenue for banks. That represented 40% of total banking revenue. Now, when I want to pay someone in another country and I need to go through the banking system, say I wanted to send a million rands and I wanted to send it through to New York, first of all, it would probably take about two or three days if it's not the weekend. Right? If it's the weekend and there are public holidays, maybe more than that. And if I've got a really nice bank, and they give me a really good deal. I might be lucky to pay 500 rand or 1,000 rand at best to send a million rand to, to the US, right? So right now, using Bitcoin, if one, one wanted to, one could transfer that value, that monetary value. It would arrive in the US within 10 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe an hour at most. And it would probably cost me a grand total of maybe five, maybe six rands. So when you think about what humanity can already do. And by the way, when it, when it goes there, it doesn't touch a single financial institution. So this is a big threat to financial institutions in a big way as well. Because that $1.7 trillion, if people are saying, well, I can do it in another way, why should I pay this? Banks need to start thinking creatively about how they can actually improve services to their customers. So this is a great opportunity for banks as well because it will bring uh, costs drastically down but it can be a great threat, as we've just talked about. But I just want to paint a little picture of what it may look like uh, in the future. We, we have, let's say, four banks in our system. And uh, as we talked about, there's a clearing and settlement process whenever we want to share or send money from one bank to another or uh, a bond or uh, you know, an equity. But you can imagine a world where actually that clearing and settlement process no longer takes place. And people use a blockchain, or these banks use a blockchain to actually communicate with one another, like the villagers. Now, as a retail customer or as a corporate customer, I don't really care what you do, Mr. Bank. Just get my money from here to there, get it done quickly, and get it done cheaply. So there could be uh, an argument to say, actually, your end customer doesn't really care what technology you use. You just need to provide the service well. Service well. Now, you could also, in this ecosystem, have other entities that could potentially come onto a blockchain. So asset managers or insurance companies that may not be banks, but for those of you that are familiar with SWIFT, that we think of as a communication network for banks, we also know that there are large corporations, ESCOM, SASL, et cetera, that are on the SWIFT network, and we could see something similar in a new blockchain world. And lastly, the central bank could actually be on the blockchain and in real time see all the transactions that are happening in the economy. There's a lot more that they can do. We don't have time for that today. But from a regulatory perspective, this is extremely powerful. The other thing is issuance of cryptocurrency. We think about cryptocurrency as a non-sovereign entity at the moment. We think about Bitcoin and Ether and uh, Dogecoin, etc. But more and more, central banks are talking about issuing their own currency onto a blockchain. Now, the Bank of Canada is doing it, Bank of England, Bank of China, the central bank in South Africa is considering these things. And so if that actually happens, then there's an argument to say that actually people can start banking directly with the central bank. And that commercial banks may be threatened by this. So if you think about the implications of that, that's, that's severe. Because commercial banks right now, central bank says, go ahead, do your, do your work. 
we don't want to be bogged down. We're interested in monetary policy. We're interested in financial stability of the economy. So do your work, and, and if people have queries, then, then they'll deal with the, the commercial banks. In this situation, you would have a world where deposit taking could be directly with the central bank. And there is a case to say that potentially the banks of the future may not be depository taking institutions. <music>